Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the Duke of Italy, your favorite lo-fi music reviewer. And today we will be covering a request, Baby Metal's 2015 self-titled album. Now you guys might notice, Duke, why are you in a different spot? Why aren't you in that, that iconic sort of position you're always in? And that's because I am not at my house. Uh, I am in a different state right now. I am in my, where I'm living currently for college. And so the, the background is a bit of a work in progress. I got a few posters back there. I'll, I'll show them off probably in another video with some other stuff I'm going to show off. But it's currently a work in progress, but it will uh, sort of be fleshed out a little more soon. I'm trying to make a more of a YouTuber appearance, kind of trying to look like deep cuts a little bit. Uh, originally, that was unintentional, but with the, the whole glow factor I'm getting right now, that's kind of how it's working. But anyways, I was actually getting to the album we're talking about today. So Baby Metal is a J metal group that came originally from a J-pop super group that split off with three members and they got way more popular than the J-pop group. So now they're just Baby Metal. Uh, unfortunately, one of the members left recently and just kind of like other requests I've been doing recently, they've also actually had a, a resurgence a bit in popularity because they actually just released, I think, a single on Spotify. I haven't listened to it, but it's probably going to be pretty good because uh, Baby Metal's actually got a consistent record going so far. So Baby Metal's style is very eclectic and most people would just sort of immediately describe it as power metal because uh, th it's very poppy. Their lyrics are totally poppy, but the instrumentals and other parts can be pushed to be anything else. It, it ranges from gent to thrash metal to a little bit of death metal, maybe some black metal every once in a while. And there's another there's another guy that has some vocal portions. Uh, I don't remember his name. He, he's not as important, but his vocals can be seen as black metal. But when it comes to some choruses, especially in songs like Gimme Chocolate, which I'll get into in a minute, it's definitely just pretty much straight pop. So they kind of just condense all the definitions into one and call it power metal, but I don't think that's a really fair description. Uh, I don't know what else I would call it other than power metal, because there is definitely some power metal portions, like the the gent playing. Uh, it almost reminds me a bit of Animals as Leaders, just a little bit. But in reality, it's so much more than that, which is honestly one of the highlights of the group. The whole, the biggest highlight of the group is you get a super cute J-pop appearance, and it is cute. Their vocals are super cutesy and fun. And if I can describe this record as anything, it's fun, and that's where all its appeal comes from. Is it perfect? I personally would say it's not perfect. There are a few flaws here and there. So the album starts off with the track Baby Metal Death. Now, Baby Metal Death is actually based off a pun because if you say death, it sounds a lot like a desu, or at least that's, I think that's how it's spelled, where the whole song they say Baby Metal and their names, and it's supposed to be like, I am this, but it's also saying it sounds like death, which is the purpose of the name song. It's, it's a pun and it's funny, but like, of course, it is a five minute or so track, so this does kind of run its course. It starts off with a really cool symphonic type intro, which I think symphonic elements to power metal is a great addition, and here it works very well. But unfortunately, these male vocals comes in, and I'm not really a big fan of them. It's trying to be sort of like, not quite a death growl, but it's kind of black metal wretched, maybe like a mortal almost, kind of like Bathory-ish, but higher production but I don't really dig it myself. But when the vocals of the actual trio come in, it's a lot more appealing. The instrumentals have these super hard power metal drums that aren't quite a blast beat, but it's a pretty iconic rhythm that you'll hear. And it's got these really genty guitars that are super distorted and they're pretty awesome. And here you're introduced to the trio, Sue Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal. And they are awesome. What can I say? The next track is Megatsune. And this is where you get actual lyrics rather than baby metal death because Bay Metal Death is really just the same thing over and over again. This track, you actually hear lyrics. And this is where one of the hardest things to pin down about the album are is the language barrier. And I'm not saying that things in other languages I don't enjoy. Of course, there are things that I love. I mean, everyone loves uh, Ciros, for example, and, and Zool, bands like Magma. They have a lot of strength in having things in other languages. And black metal even a ton of burzum stuff is in norwegian so it's i can't understand it but it's really the rush vocals that is the appeal here and the thing is with those songs it's a lot more meditative and supposed to evoke a feeling but the fact that a lot of these songs in this album are six minutes or shorter usually shorter it's a lot harder to digest 
in another language. Of course, you still get your hooks and stuff, so they are sort of easier to, to digest in that way, but it is sort of a consistent barrage of all these three to four minute type songs. It's kind of hard to pin down everything at once, and with the length of this album, it's kind of hard to digest it as a whole. It is just a tad over an hour long, which normally isn't a huge deal, but here with the track lengths and the album length as a whole, it's not a great combination where you feel like you could get the same effect with cutting a couple tracks. I'm getting off topic, so Megatsune. Now, another strength of Megatsune is that it shows a bit of the eclectic side of the album, where I think it has a shamisen in there. I'm not sure what the instrument is, but it's, it's some Japanese stringed instrument. My bad for not knowing what it is. I thought the rhythm guitar parts were a little too percussive for my liking to truly match with the sort of style they were going with, but other than that, the song's pretty consistent and good overall. The chorus is sung very well, even if I don't know the lyrics, and in, again, it's just a fun song, so the key strength is coming back here with the, the fun qualities. The next song is their big hit, Gimme Chocolate. Now, Gimme Chocolate is a super fun song. They actually did a collab with Dragon Force one time where they did it live and they had them play in the background. You got Hern and Lee just shredding the guitar for Gimme Chocolate. It's kind of a hilarious situation. And now, of course, just me being me, I immediately thought the song was about wanting chocolate, which, I mean, I can get with. Like, I love chocolate. Like, it's great. And with the style of the sort of power metal kind of cheesiness they were going with, I'll was expecting it to just be silly, but actually, it's apparently a song about fighting temptation, which, I mean, you've exceeded my expectations, baby metal. <laughs> Good for you. I really love the tone of the snare on this one and the way it just snaps over and over again. It's really, it's really tight, and it's got a lot of appeal. I love the contrast between the verse, where it's got these really sludgy guitars, and then it shifts into this really poppy type of chorus, which has got so much energy packed into it that you just can't help but be gripped. I love how the lead guitar just screams over the entire track, especially with its solo towards the end. So this song is a serious highlight off there. The only real flaw I can say about it is that the weird synth sound at the beginning isn't exactly for me, but you know, whatever. Another plus I can say about Gimme Chocolate is that it really connects well into Lion! Exclamation point. That's the name of the song. It's, it's, it's right there. It starts with sort of these like chip toony synths, which I thought were super tight. Like I think that's a really good addition to anything poppy or even metal, you know, if you just want to be more eclectic in that regard. It has sort of this like J Euro beat over this like gent guitar sound, which the, the beat reminds me of something like initial D, you know, the memes. The song evokes some pretty similar feelings of previous baby metal tracks at this point, but then it has this trap breakdown, which came out of nowhere and it's just so great seeing it there. Like, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Trap, but like it's just being there is just so tight. The song kind of sounds like grindcore, but with like power metal guitars instead. It's a really interesting mix. Yeah, this song really satisfied me at every single turn. There's even a point where one of the members has like a power metal like scream, which I think there should have been more of. Like get rid of the male vocalist and just keep one of them just screaming over it. The next song is Akatsuki. I apologize for pronunciation. I'm not Japanese, nor do I speak any Japanese, but I like this song. Now, this song is highly emotionally impactful. It sounds kind of like the Tokyo Ghoul song that with the memes, you know, doge, but it's followed by this layered sort of Dragon Force-esque instrumental, and it's got these like string leads over it that's it's really appealing, and just the symphonic elements, again, are really strong here. There's another guitar solo here, and it's just as good as the previous tracks. The lyrics are just as emotionally impactful as they were before. Uh, there's also a piano part here, which sounds really nice, but it only really pops out once or twice, which could just be due to the production, but I'm not sure. The next track is Doki Doki Morning. Now the intro leads into this sort of genty metalcore section, which is followed by these really layered synths. And the progression of these parts, it builds the energy to a level that's highly appealing. The lyrics were pretty awesome, and the way they were syncopated was really nice. Unfortunately, the actual chorus of, of the song was not as fulfilling as I would have liked it to be, and it does repeat a lot, but other than that, the song's pretty good. The next song, which I'm not going to try to pronounce because I'm going to mess it up by a large margin, is probably one of my least favorite tracks on the whole album. I thought the synths combined with the guy yelling over them were not very fun. I just thought they were really weird. But the chorus was pretty good, and I found it pretty easy to headbang to, if that's what you're into. I love the build where they just talk about wanting money, and I mean, I can, I can get it. Greed is a thing. I thought the song ended on also a pretty unflattering note, but it's okay. The next track is Song 4, which um, I, don't, I don't know why it's in this part of the album. It's not the fourth song. Other than the one flaw of the placement, I thought it was actually a pretty dope track. 
It's got these sort of guitar arpeggios with these awesome vocal parts over it, which really starts the song off well. There's a reggae bit that's added in, which uh, I'm not a big fan of reggae, but when it comes in for the first time, I'm like, okay, cool. But the thing is, it's stylistically, it's immediately done for. Like, I, I get tired of it the next time it comes up because I thought it was going to be sort of a one-time thing. It's not. It pops up like three or four times. And then the song does proceed to drag on just a bit, and it is an okay song overall, I would say. The next song is Uki Uki Midnight. The intro progresses through four different sections, which kind of just goes to show all the styles they're trying to accomplish in this album. I thought the drumming on this track went really, really hard, and that was probably one of the best parts about it. There's also a dubstep breakdown. At least that's what I could tell it was like. It was pretty nice. And of course, the chorus was fun, which is another one of their strengths on this album. The song Catch Me If You Can is also pretty good. It's got an awesome intro with distorted guitar, which is followed with a simple but highly effective drum pattern. There's also a very energetic drum machine that goes above it. Of course, it is pretty similar to previous tracks on the album, but it is pretty good. The next song, Rondo of Nightmare, also has a lot of strengths to it. There's a looping piano portion, which is followed by this really heavy guitar part, but the piano leads you to believe that it's going to be a ballad, uh, so the guitar does sound a little unnecessary and I felt like just for contrast on the album it would have been a good change of pace to have a ballad because they are they do have j-pop roots here so I would not be upset with having sort of a ballad piece I mean even on Valley of the Damned with Dragon Force they had a ballad which would be Starfire I thought the chorus was pretty great on the song but overall it just kind of missed the mark for me the next song Headbanger which that's the name has a ton of energy it's got this string filled opening which turns into complete thrash metal the song towards the end has a blast beat which i love blast beats please have more of them and it's got a nice breakdown so the song leaves you feeling pretty blown away overall this leads me into the final track on the album which i will not be trying to pronounce because that would be a critical error i thought this song was actually the highlight of the album it's like a six minute burner with some proggy elements which i think was the last element needed to sort of complete the album it sounds totally gent filled and the vocals are pretty awesome as well and there's a varying series of different riffs which almost reminds me of something like mastodon so i thought that was the best closer that could have possibly been on the album it's it completes it very well and it gives the album a very full feeling. So overall, I thought that the rhythm section of the guitars were a bit too percussive. The metal growl voice of the, whoever was the male vocalist on the album, I never thought was very flattering, and that's coming from someone who likes the wretched vocals and the screams. But other than that, I thought it was very strong overall. Other than that, I think that the biggest flaw in the album was that a lot of the songs kind of blend together. A lot of the times I was kind of struggling to remember what each song sounded like. But overall, it's got strong riffs. It's very cute. The vocals, I would say, are beautiful. And there's a decent amount of variety. And the variety is one of its greatest strengths. And the power metal bass line it has for the album as a whole is a very nice way to start it off where they have all this punch so of course it is not perfect but i am comfortable in giving them a decent come to brazil this is a strong album if you want to get into baby metal this is probably the album to use i've not listened to their other stuff so maybe they went a little more eclectic down the line i would have actually liked to see maybe a 40 minute album from them or something with longer songs i'd love to see like a prog metal track something uh last baron-esque but there's a lot of strength here. I thought it was a good album overall, so I had a good time with it. Anyway, that's the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. I have some more reviews in the mix and a couple of stuff I'm going to show off for another video in the future. Uh, the charts will be coming back. Um, I'm working on some really big ones right now, so they're going to take, take, a, take a cold minute to get through because I have like 70 albums to get through for one of them, which it's going to be bigger than the Britpop chart, but you guys... I hope you guys can stay tuned for that because I, I think it's going to be some good stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button if you're so feeling it. Uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, you can comment down below. I will probably respond. Uh, I also have my social medias linked down below, and I'd love to talk to you guys for any reason. If you really enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and maybe hitting the bell icon. It helps me out a lot, and it's also completely free. So if you guys like my content, you'll just keep seeing it in your subscription feed and i just love making videos for you guys so i'd love to just keep doing that anyways that's about it i hope you guys are having a good day